So this is what's in store, okay? It's gonna be a relaxed conversational format. We're gonna show some basic tips on using the photos and preview apps on a Macintosh computer. We're also gonna, if we, if we have time, we'll also show the photo booth app where you can do some fun uh, um, snaps using um, uh, filters and things, kind of like as if you were at a photo booth at a carnival. Um, we'll do this uh, in real time uh, in a user profile that we created on a MacBook Pro laptop. That's what's right in front of me. And it's running the latest uh, operating system, I believe, of 12.01 Monterey, if that matters to you. And at the very end, we're also gonna show slides with just some additional uh, resources. And I'm gonna talk um, to you once again, very conversationally during this, I'm gonna do everything in real time. And now I am going to go to the Photos app. Um, so <clears throat> the Photos app comes built into any MacBook or uh, iMac or basically Macintosh computer that you purchase. Um, it's a way to organize your photos, manipulate them, crop them, uh, make them better. Um, and I'm going to show some ways that we can bring some photos in and then we'll mess around with them a bit. I put some folders on the desktop with some photos. Um, uh, so here, notice I, I open the, uh, I'll, I'll also open photos again, just so it's clear. So I'm going to quit photos and then I'm going to go down. I have it set so that the dock uh, hides. Um, if I'm not using it so that it, I have more screen real estate. Um, so it automat So if I put the cursor on it, it'll pop up. Um, if you're interested, I'll show you how to do that. It might be a handy thing. Um, if you go to the Apple menu up here and go to system preferences, uh, one of the, uh, the things in there is dock and menu bar. And over here, you can control it. So I have it set to, so I set it to be at the bottom of the screen and to automatically, this one here, if you can see the, my cursor, to automatically hide and show the dock. So I find it handy. Some people find it annoying if they don't see the dock all the time. So I'm now gonna close that. I'm gonna go down, rest the cursor here, and then I'm gonna go find, I'm gonna move this out of the way so you can see it. And I'm gonna find the photos app. So. That's it there and see when you rest the cursor there for a second it actually shows you the text as well. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna move this bar out of the way. And notice that it tells you right away, and this is a brand new profile. Um, I think I've only added one photo into it, but you can bring photos in like from a device, like uh, an iPad or an iPhone. Um, you can bring it in um, like with uh, using a, um, like if you have a memory card in a, your camera, you can put that memory card into a, a device like this and then put it, uh, attach it to the computer. They come in different uh, shapes. Uh, you also might have photos on a flash drive. Here's what one flash drive looks like. And in this case, I would put it in, I kind of use these little cables, these little dongles to make it easier to plug into um, the computer. Uh, in this case, it's got a USB, um, traditional USB uh, connector. Um, some of the newer, if you have a new Mac, it might be using what they call USB-C, which is a different type of connector. And that's what this uh, laptop has. And I have some adapters so that I can bring a normal uh, USB flash drive, a storage device. I can pop it into this and then plug that into the computer. So those are some ways you can bring photos in, into your computer. Um, in this case, I am going to demonstrate um, just dropping one into photos. So where do you have photos open? I have this window here. I have a screenshot that I took. So um, I, used, I took a, basically a, a snapshot of an image on the computer and I'm going to just grab it and drop it right in there. And there it is. And I'm going to double click on it so I can see it larger. I'm gonna double click again. Oh, actually, uh, um, now I minimized it. Um, a little tip, which I only learned in preparing for this class is, if you're resting on an image, if you hold the space bar down, it'll bring it up for you. It'll, it'll uh, make it larger. So that's a little, just, um, I guess, uh, um, can, can save you a little effort. Um, I'm still kind of used to clicking and double clicking. Also, when you're looking at a large version of the image, you can use this arrow over here to bring it back down to see all the things in the library. 
So that was a simple drag and drop. And now that image is in the photos application. I am now going to bring in some by uh, going to file and import. Does everybody see that? And I'll do it again. I'm gonna go up to file and there's a lot of options there. One of them is import. So I'm gonna click on it. And I'm gonna go hunt down a folder that has some uh, images in it. In this case, I'm gonna click, I tend to leave things on my desktop often so I can get at it easily. So I'm gonna go over here on the left side, I'm gonna click on desktop. And I happened to name something earlier today, OSnap images, that's the name of the class, OSnap. Uh, I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to click on review for import. Let's see how this goes. So it brought everything in rather quickly. Uh, I just grabbed an array of, um, of pictures I thought might be interesting and also some that we can use to make a meme at the end of the class if you're interested. Um, so right now they're in this kind of review mode. I'm going to click on import all new photos and it's going to bring them in. So now they're actually in the photos app. And if I click on library, I will see them all in there. I am now going to edit a photo. Um, so I am going to go to this one over here. I'm going to double click on it. Um, so this was when uh, Mayor Breed uh, came to the library um, to uh, as part of an earthquake preparedness um, exercise and to also thank the library employees for being disaster service workers during uh, the pandemic. Um, and I'm going to show a few just editing uh, things here. So I am going to go over here where it says edit, and that's going to bring up a bunch of uh, controls. So here I go. And the first thing I'm going to do you know, is I'm going to go to crop. And here we go. Uh, now, when you're in this crop mode, you can grab it by the side here and change, um, I, I guess, uh, the orientation um, in case something just is a little off. Like, you know, I right, right now, I think I'm going to try and line up these um, the grid with the windows over here. So that would be just a little bit different. Um, and I'm now going to grab it by the sides and bring it in a bit, make it tighter, get rid of these distracting elements up top, but keep in the, uh, the banners behind them. And now just a little bit closer. Um, now, when you do it this way, I'm kind of freehand uh, cropping. And that um, is great for me if I'm just gonna put it on like say Facebook or something like that. But if it was gonna be printed, I would want it to conform to a ratio that would maybe be a four by six print or an eight by 10 or whatever the, um, uh, the situation that you're uh, going to be using it for. So I am gonna click over here to aspect. And so I'm gonna click on original. So it's gonna bring it back to, that was the, um, uh, I guess the dimensions that it had before. And say this was, um, well, uh, I'm gonna say we're gonna make it into a five by seven print, take it down to Walgreens and have it printed. So that would be the ratio. So we wouldn't have things uh, accidentally cropped out of it that we wanted. And then I'm gonna move it around a little bit within this framework to make it the best that I um, can for, for printing. Now, say I just want to um, grab a few people in this. Uh, I am going to go back to Freeform and I am going to go past Mary Ellen Carroll, who is uh, head of disaster service management, go over to the police officer. I'm gonna go right in on Mayor Breed and bring in uh, Michael Lambert, who is the uh, San Francisco city librarian. And maybe I could want to bring it up here, keep the city seal in it. But you can see, this is how you can crop. If you crop too closely or too severely uh, and the image doesn't have enough information in it or isn't sharp enough, then you might see some flaws. It might be softer or grainy. So be careful in cropping. That's why it's also great when you're in photography, when you get as close as possible to the subject, um, as opposed to um, being far back and then needing to, um, to crop, then you lose quality. So this is, uh, and so now say 
um, I get all befuddled, I'm unhappy with what I did, I just wanna get back to where I was, I'm gonna click down here on reset. And now I'm back to the way it was originally. I'm gonna to go to adjust and I am going to play around with some of the settings here. So you can tell it to automatically work on the lighting by clicking that and do auto. It's gonna do some corrections for you. Uh, I'm gonna turn that off. Um, if you click over here, and I'm just gonna show some basics. And then you know uh, later on on your own, you can play around with, uh, with uh, these controls because there's, there's a lot of adjustments that you can make. Now, by my clicking on the auto before, I think I actually made some adjustments. You can see these sliding bars, brilliance exposure, highlight, they're, they're all moved over a little bit. So I am going to go to reset adjustments. So now it's back to the way it was. And we're gonna play with a few things. I'm going to bring out highlights. Let's see if that helps this a bit. Um, if you go too severely, sometimes it might look good at one part that you are there, but it also might look awful in another part of the photo. So when you're making these changes, take a look at the overall um, picture. Uh, so here I'm gonna to go to brightness. I could think of use a little brightness. Uh, I don't know if it needs contrast. So um, say I wanted to make it black and white. I can click over here and it's made it black and white automatically. And one of the great things in using the photos application program is that they call it non-destructive. So you can make all these changes, but you can always, always go back to the original. So here I'm gonna reset adjustments, we're back. Um, if you have a photo that has red eye in it, like you know from a flash or something, you can click on it to automatically um, change it in the eyes but you can also grab um, this little tool and you can touch on the eyes and it will remove the red eye. We don't have that in this case, it was just natural uh, light. So there's no red eye for me to correct. So anyway, so you can see there's a ton of different adjustments here. Um, like once again, and uh, that can uh, really help save a photo. Uh, I've noticed in the past I've used brilliance and shadows a lot to bring out the, um, if I have a photo that's a little too dark, um, I've used a little bit of this to bring it out. So I'm gonna go to reset adjustments. And now I'm gonna click, uh, oh, let's take a look at filters. And I think one thing that's changed with filters. So we're gonna go to, let's go to vivid warm. Okay, so it automatically did that. A new um, thing they've added is these filters are adjustable by the slider. So I could put this vivid warm on and then just say, oh, maybe just, you know, maybe just 11% of that is what I'm looking for um, or all the way. So I'm gonna just now go back to not using any of it. Here, I'm gonna try, uh, so this is a black and white one, uh, film noir, I imagine it's gonna be sepia tone. No, it's just, uh, but let's see, here we go. And then we go back to, to having color and here it's going black and white. So I am going to click done. And let's see if I can revert to the original somewhere. Edit, reset adjustments. Oh, that's interesting. So, um, oh, here we are on the upper left. That's where revert to original is. So you might want to remember that. If I click on it, then we're back to the way it was when we brought it in. Um, I'm going to click done. And then I'm going to use this arrow over here to the left. And now we're back at the main um, screen. Let me see what else would be interesting uh, to show you with, with it. So this is so this is not a photo, but it's a, an image. And same thing, you can click on edit and make whatever changes you would like, including cropping, or say it came in and it was uh, the wrong orientation, say it, it was landscape and it was upside down. So then you could click this to make it the right position. Uh, Go. And if you want to know information about the photo, it, there's a little information uh, button here. And it has the name, which is the title I gave it earlier. There's no information about it, um, about a camera, because it's just uh, an image that we, we got from the library for one of our, this is from one of our um, summer reading programs. So I am going to click done again and go back here. And I'm going to find something that was taken with a camera. Um, so this was from our Veterans Film Festival a few years ago, um, two filmmakers uh, speaking with the audience. And 
I'm going to click on information. Let's see. Huh. So it's saying it was taken with an iPhone 11. It's telling us what aperture, what speed, uh, the resolution, a lot of information there. And also where it was taken, right here in San Francisco, uh, by me, as it so happens. So, and once again, uh, if I wanted to use this as maybe uh, part of a postcard uh, promoting an event or whatever, I might click on edit and then crop, and I might bring it in a little tighter. All depends on what you're going to do with the image. Um, it's also a little, um, I guess the tone is a little yellow. Let's see, um, we'll play around with a little um, of adjustments so and click on adjust. And I'm going to go down to white balance. Let's see, I'm going to tell it to automatically make an adjustment. And I'm going to think, oh, I think that's a little too warm for me. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go from here so you can see how you can change it just by the, using the sliders. Um, and there are, I think there are additional adjustments like this one's neutral gray. Um, we can work, uh, adjust skin tone and we can adjust temperature overall of the image. So here I'll just. There was a question, can these adjustments be made to just one selected area of the photo rather than the whole area? You might have to use like another like software like Photoshop or like some online photo editing platforms to kind of edit certain areas of your photo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, so this is kind of like, um, you know, like the, the, uh, the, the simple version, like, uh, like it doesn't do as, as much as Photoshop, but it does um, most of the things one needs. Uh, in the other app, the preview app, there is, I know they have a form of, um, of, of a selector where you can get rid of some of the background. And I don't know if you could kind of uh, use that to then change parts of uh, separate parts of it. Once again, there's there's just a lot of adjustments in here. Let me see if there's anything else. Right, selected color. Um, I'll I'll do further uh, research on that, or maybe we'll do a, a photos advanced at some point because we were keeping this kind of basics. Um, if you're someone who does know, know how to do Photoshop things like that, then you might use like uh, these kind of curves. Um, I I personally don't know too much about it, um, but you can play around with it. And like you see, it can go it can go horribly wrong or someplace truly interesting and creative, but you can always do um, revert to original and get back and retouch. Well, I'll show you the retouch thing in a minute also. Um, OK, so that's what I have for, I think, this part right now. Um, I'm going to click done. And go over here. And I'll show you a retouch um in one of these let's see um okay this is a cartoon character the tick who uh i find oh no actually we'll do it with uh the veterans film festival logo so this is a logo and we needed to use it again this year um but we needed it to have either no year or say 2021 uh so what i did uh is i clicked on edit i clicked on the retouch and I brought the size down to something that seemed controllable. And then I, why I went across it like this a few times. And then I waited. And then it was almost gone. Here we go. So I'm gonna go. So it's blending it in to fit with the area that's around it. So this can come in handy if you need to erase something. Sometimes you can see something's been erased and it uh, looks more disturbing than having that in there. But here's a case where this was really handy. And now I'm going to click done. And I can show you um, when we get to the preview app, what we did is we basically then um, added a text box and said 2021. So hopefully that's a handy thing to know how to do. Um, Another thing one can do is like when you're using this, there are different ways of finding uh, information. Um, so in this case, I you know this is all new information. These are all new images in here, so I don't have like years of photos in there where it would be broken down by that. Um, the memories part of the library um, will automatically create for you um, like groupings of photos based on a time or a location or event. So it might you might have taken a bunch of photos at a holiday party and they might be uh, grouped together. You can also create those yourself. The people one will scan um, um, 
the images and look for faces and it's pretty good at it and it'll ask you to identify folks and then you can put someone's name let me see let's uh let me see if we can work this uh zero photo scan view people so it's not i'm not quite sure how to we'll continue scanning for if you're not using your app okay so it's going to do it uh, later on, but it can scan for photos and then you can name people and then you can search for individual folks. Like say you need to do a, a birthday card and you want to use a photo of someone and you're not sure where they are amongst your thousand photos. That's one way you could find someone. Um, places. Oh, and here it's great. So it, it has, uh, it shows you photos um, by location. So if I click on this, it's, it'll show me hopefully all the photos in from this area. Let me see, so we click on San Francisco. And I guess there's only one for this, okay? Uh, recents, these are all kind of recent because they just came in. Import, so I think it'll treat it as an import. So this one, okay, because I use the import function as opposed to dragging it over, it, uh, it considers this um, uh, an import. And once again, and this, just so you know, is a screenshot of Canopy, which is a free service from the library. Um, so you get to, I think it's either 15 or 20 now, but you can watch incredible art house films, old movies, documentaries, and it's all free. You can stream it on your computer, your phone, your tablet, um, uh, Roku's, Apple TVs, uh, Google Chrome. So um, uh, anyway, so that's um, just a little bonus there. Um, one thing that we're going to do when we move over to uh, the uh, preview app, uh, which I'll show you why that's a little different, is I took some of these photos, I got them from the web, and I grabbed a, a local burrito and some local tacos, and I put them together, and I did what they called a, a screenshot, but I created this image, and then I, I exported it, and I opened it in preview, uh, and then I added these text boxes. And so this was an, this is an example of a meme, something you might put out on social media, to be humorous or to convey some um, um, some opinion you have, you probably see them all the time. And, and sometimes people do something like this, they'll they'll state an opinion and say burritos are better than tacos. And then they'll say, change my mind or fight me or something like that. So that, and I'll show you how to do that. But the first part for me was creating the image that I wanted, which was two things together. Um, okay. uh, this may or may not be interesting to you, but as I was looking for photos and things that could make memes, I was looking up Humphrey Bogart and Casablanca, which has such great quotes. And these are actually the um, <laughs> the lifts that Humphrey Bogart uh, needed to wear during the filming of Casablanca, so he would be taller than Ingrid Bergman. So I was uh, thought that was quite interesting to find. I imagine he would uh, crop this photo <laughs> and uh, get and get rid of the straps. Okay. Um, media types, let me see. Shared albums is also, uh, this is something that's built into photos and lets you um, create an, an album of photos and then share it with other Apple users. Um, and then they can access it through their photos app, or you can, um, for folks who are not Apple users, you can put it up on the web as a, um, as a kind of like a little photo album um, just living there on the web. And so anyone can see it if you give them permission. And I don't think we have, yeah, we haven't created any albums yet. Um, I'll create one now. I, I'm on my albums. I'm gonna click the plus sign. I'm gonna create a new album. And I'm gonna call it Bogey for Humphrey Bogart. So now I'm gonna go back to the library and I'm going to click and then I'm going to hold the command key down. This is worth knowing or remembering. If I hold the command key down, I can then click on different images and they'll all be linked together, including you could do something, you can skip several images and, and, um, and still have them linked. So I'm going to unclick the burrito because that's not a bogey image. Now I'm going to let go and I'm going to drag that into bogey. So now it's in an album. When it's in an album, it's uh, it still lives in the library here, but it's just also kind of um, um, it's included in this. You can delete something from a an album, and it won't delete it from the library. So you might say, "Oh, I don't want this picture in this grouping," and I could click it, 
and hit the delete key and it's gone from the album. But if I click the library, the image is still there. So that means you can create like if you're you're working on a few different projects or family events, and you want to have different photos in there. You can create a bunch of different albums, but you can um, but you can edit them um, kind of at will. Okay. Now here's something I haven't done in a long time. I'm going to do shared albums. So this one, okay. oh, I cannot create a shared album. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I meant to actually give me. I'm sorry. I meant to do something else. Uh, Smart album. Okay, I'm going to go up to, um, and I think the reason I can't do a shared album is this account um, is new and it's not linked to any iCloud account. So I believe that's the reason I can't do the shared albums because we're not connected. Um, I am going to go up to file and do new smart album right over here, new smart album. And a smart album has uh, criteria so you can um, narrow things down. I'm gonna go um, bogey best, okay? So I'm gonna say photo, and here's the criteria you can use for this album. And I'm gonna go photo is, hmm. I'm gonna go album is, so this is the first criteria, is bogey. I only have one album at this point. I'm gonna click the plus sign here and I'm gonna go photo is a favorite. Now we haven't shown favorites yet, but I'll show that now. So I'm gonna click okay. And I believe this smart album will be empty. So let's see, okay. Bogey best is empty because it's pulling from the bogey album but there are no favorites in there. So a favorite um, is basically you saying that you like a photo and it's a great way to group things like say, oh, that, I love that photo of myself or someone else. So I'm gonna say, this one is a favorite because I think the lighting on it looks better than this one. So I'm gonna make that a favorite. And then that famous speech you know, at the airport, I'm gonna do that. So these are both favorites. Another way to make something a favorite is while you're on it, you can hold the period key. Do you see how that little heart turned on and off? I'm hitting the period key and that's turning it on and off. So now I'm gonna click on bogey best and we have two images in there. If I go back to bogey and I decide I only want the one with him uh, uh, drinking and, and all uh, sorrowful, um, I'm gonna, uncheck that, and now Bogey Best only has one image. Um, another great thing about favorites is it's over here, right here on the left side. So if you click on that, you'll see all the images that are favorites. So I'm gonna go back to library, and I'm going to decide that, well, I don't know, uh, Mayor Breed is a favorite, and uh, Bugs is a favorite, and now, um, if I click on favorites, I will see these three. But in bogey best, I'm only gonna see Bogart because it's pulling from the bogey folder. I am going to now export a few items from here. So I hope, I hope this is clear that you can bring photos in multiple ways. Well, actually, I'm gonna do something else so you can see. I have an iPad here and it has a photo library in it. Um, it has a regular USB connector. Um, but I have an adapter over here, which you cannot see, uh, which has um, a USB connector. And I'm going to now plug this in. And I am going to log in. Okay. And I guess it's treating it a little. So here it's automatically bringing in um, everything from this library. So um, that the photos library that's on this iPad. So I'm gonna click this image from a class we taught a long time ago with two colleagues I like an awful lot. And I am going to see up at the top here, it says import one selected. That's because I selected one image. If I uncheck it, 
Um, there's nothing. So I'm going to do it again. And one thing to be careful of if you, if you do this is that you don't accidentally do import all new items was so up there and then I would be bringing in several hundred images. So I'm going to go import one selected. And now it's here. And I can double click on it. And this image is now in here. And and now I am going to I'm just, I'm just going to close that for a second. I'm going to detach this right now. Hope that won't cause any conniptions. Okay, and bring back my photos out. Here we go. So that is another way to bring an image into your photos library. Um, another thing you may want to know about is AirDrop. Uh, in fact, I didn't know about that until a few years ago uh, um, when we did a class and some folks hipped us to it. So it's a way to share things between Apple devices. It's particularly handy if someone is sharing like a large video or something and you just wanna be able to um, get it from one device to another. Um, so I'm gonna do that really, well, hopefully really quickly. I'm gonna find um, an image on this device. So bear with me. I'm going to go to photos and I'm going to find an image. Uh, let's see, okay. And you may not be able to see it, but there's the universal kind of um, share symbol on the Apple devices, which is a square um, with an arrow at the top. So I am going to hit that. And then it gives me, once again, you may not be able to see it, but it gives me a bunch of choices of how I want to share it. And I'm gonna choose AirDrop. And it sees the, um, this device, it appears. So I'm gonna click on that. And you see now it's popping up over here. AirDrop would and so would like to share a photo. So I'm going to click accept. Now Fine. when you do that, you haven't. Fine. Yeah, I don't see it. Oh, it's not showing. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes uh, uh, the things that go behind uh, 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 the scenes don't show up um, when you're sharing things. Um, but basically, I I'm going to I'm going to just continue on with it. But um, this device sent that photo to photos and it's giving me an image, um, a pop-up window that says airdrop would like to share a photo. So I'm going to click on, it gives me two choices. I can save it to downloads or open in photos. I'm gonna open in photos. So hopefully you'll at least see that. So take uh, my, um, on faith that um, uh, um, pop-up windows have, have occurred and hopefully we're gonna see a new image. And here it is. So that's a, just another way of bringing things into your your device, into and in this case, into photos. Um, so uh, I think we covered a lot of ways of getting things into photos. So once again, from the desktop by dragging it, um, by choosing import and bringing it in, um, by using um, some kind of device that will um, bring your memory card in or plugging your camera in directly. Um, plugging in an iPhone or an iPad um, or like I said, or using a flash drive, which is basically a storage device and plugging that in. And then you can bring the photos into photos. Um, so I'm gonna go over here. Um, so now I'm going to export um, maybe two images. Um, I am going to export Humphrey Bogart. So I clicked on the image and I'm going to go to file and export. Now here you have some choices. Um, <clears throat> if you have a really fancy camera, you, it might take photos in a few different formats, including this one called raw. And um, uh, you would be able to then send it out the same way it came in or just whatever format it was in in size, you can say, just send it back out the way it came in. Don't make any changes in photos. Just give me that image. In this case, I'm gonna go export one photo and I have options on um, how I wanna save it, what quality, what uh, format. JPEG is super popular, common format, um, smaller size images. Um, they take a hit on a kind of in quality in compression and stuff to make it smaller. I'm going to click on it. TIFF is a larger, higher quality format. P 
PNG is pretty popular. I've been saving most of my images in that format because it is um, compressed a bit, but the quality is very high. So I'm going to choose to do that. But the image that came in was probably a JPEG, but it is gonna go, it's gonna go out as a PNG. And now I'm gonna click on export. And then whenever you're saving anything on your computer, you have an option, you know, it's, uh, you can, you're in control. You can tell it to, I want to save it here or there. By default, very often they go into the downloads folder or the documents folder. Uh, in this case, I'm clicking on desktop and I'm now going to go export. I could also create a new folder. Um, in fact, I'll do that just so you see what it's like. So I have the option to create a new folder. Now I'm going to call it um, photos exports and click create. And now I'm gonna click export. So this image is now in that folder on the desktop as a PNG format. I'm gonna download one other image. Let's see what we're gonna do. Um, I guess maybe uh, Daffy Duck. I'm gonna to go to file, export, export one photo. I'm gonna do the same thing, PNG. If I chose JPEG, I should get some additional options. Let's see. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, actually, it might have been. Let me turn that up. There we go. So that was something I neglected to do. I didn't click this. And when I click it, it gives me more choices. So I can pick um, you know, the color profile. But the biggest thing is size uh, and what quality you want. So in this case, I'm going to say full size. And I'm going to export and automatically it's looking to take us to that folder we just last used, export. So Ryan? Yes. So you're exporting one photo, but then you have the options of exporting the photos into different resolutions, right? That is correct. Um, so we'll, we'll go, we'll do that again. Um, so I'm gonna go to library, gonna do this photo of Mayor Breed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna export it two different ways. So I'm going to go to, um, so this was taken with an iPhone, my iPhone. Uh, so it's probably in a whole different format, which is I think HEIC, which is a high, I forget, a, a, high, a high quality um, compression uh, version. It's one of, I think Apple's, Apple has a, a specific version of it. So I'm gonna go to file, export. So I'm gonna export unmodified original. And that's really all the choices I have when I do that. So I'm going to export it and make sure I put it in uh, the photos exports folder. And now I'm also going to do the same photo. I'm going to export one photo. <clears throat> now in this case, I can do PNG. And these are the, these are the choices I have, so like you know, small, medium, large, full size. Under custom, I haven't used that before. So here it is, we could, there, there is some other additional controls. So we can, we can play with the, um, the height and resolution there. So Brian, can you export it to like a different location, like a flash drive? Yes, and I will plug in. So here is a flash drive connected with a USB-C adapter. I'm going to plug it into the adapter I have here. So I'm going to click cancel. So I'm going to go file, export, one photo. I'm going to leave it as PNG full size, export. And I'm looking over here. It's not showing there. I'm going to click on over here. Let me see, make sure that the, uh, the drive is actually showing. I forget what I named that drive, but so I'm gonna uh, export. Let me take a look at the, uh, I'm gonna go over here and see if it showed up. There it is, oh snap. So now I'm going to, uh, let me see if I can get back, excuse me, moving this around a bit. Photos. And I'm gonna to go to file, export, export one photo. 
PNG, export. And when I get to this window on the left side, this is what I was looking for. You'll see it has an icon that shows that it's an external drive and it has the name. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click export. And so in this case, it's now going onto that drive. Um, you could also just save it into a folder on the desktop and just drag it over later. But yes, you can you can export to um, to a connected drive. I'm still going to export this one photo. Make sure it goes into the um, so now see now it's automatically going to the oh snap to in, into the uh, the flash drive. But now I'm going to click on desktop pro. I'm going to get to the desktop. And then we have the photos exports and I'm going to export it into there just to make sure it's there also because we're going to use it to um, perhaps make a meme. Okay, so now I'm going to quit photos. We can come back to it if we need to. Um, oh, the other thing I didn't mention is there is this tool up here, um, the auto enhance. So it basically um, the Mac is going to make its best guess at what is right and wrong with the photo and give give you an updated version, um, like lighting, color. So let's see, I'm going to click it once. See, so you see it brightened it quite a bit. And I can do it again. It's, you can use it, you can do it multiple times. So, and if one needs to, one can undo auto enhance, undo auto enhance. Uh, oh, if I go to edit, Yes. So if you go to edit, then I can go to revert to original and that takes care of any of these changes I made in this other screen. Okay. So now I'm going to quit photos. Okay. okay. Once again, so that's the photos app. Now, another thing that comes built in is the, um, the preview app and that comes in handy. Um, let me show you also where, um, applications live in case you want to be able to put them in the desk, uh, in, into the, uh, um, the doc yourself. So I'm going over here to the finder, which is on the left side of that doc. I'm going to click on it once. And then up here are applications. So all the programs that are loaded into your computer are there, including some helpful things in utilities. So this is where I found the preview app over here. And basically I grabbed it. I brought it down to the doc. I waited for the doc to kind of pop up and then notice how, you know, you can get little spaces in between the programs. And then I let it go in there. I'm not going to do that now because it's already in the doc. So, so, so in case that's helpful. So now I'm going to go, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to open a program and it's going to, I'm going to open up a file and it's going to open up preview. So I am going to go to OSNAP PDFs after I move this down to the bottom. And so we have a few PDFs and basically a PDF is kind of a, a frozen, slightly frozen document so that when you, uh, you share it, it looks roughly the way it left you when the other person opens it up. So, um, um, you know, people can use special software to edit them, but by and large, um, if you say create a document in Microsoft Word, like say your resume, you can save it as a PDF and send it to them. And then when they look at it on the screen, the formatting should be okay and it should print well. Um, there's also, there are other PDFs too, which are not created from documents. Um, but uh, anyway, but that's the, the, I think the most common PDF. And I'll open up one. We did a cat video class some years ago. And um, so this was a Microsoft Word document that we saved. We know we, we, uh, we laid it out all the way that we liked it. Um, we also included live links to sites in it. Um, but let me show you what you can do. Like say someone sends you a PDF and you don't have Adobe Acrobat or something like that and you wanna be able to open it and maybe make um, add to it. So we'll do something with this one. Um, I'm going to, once again, double click on this um, first page and I'm going to do a word balloon. Say, I'm gonna to go to tools and annotate and I am going to go for a speech bubble. Okay, I can't find this. Okay, I'll click OK. So it gave me a speech bubble, and I am going to 
I'm not going to worry about making it look perfect or whatever. I'm going to say, uh, this cat wanted to say something. Um, let's see. So if I, so I click twice to get in there. Um, and I'm going to say, you know, howdy say, you know, but this is once again, how one could create a meme or, or, or make a note on something. So I'm going to click howdy. Uh, and I am going to, I double click just to get a, get a hold of the text. And if I go up here, do you, I don't know if you see in the toolbar here, it has a thing that shows uh, text. So I can change things. So right now the color is red. So if I click on it, I can make it black. Um, if I want to make it, uh, if I want to get wordier uh, and I need more room, I could make the text say, I know, 16 point. I could also drag this and move it around. So uh, here we go. So howdy, um, this is an example. of adding a speech balloon. Um, and once again, you can manipulate it, you can grab it. So, okay. So that's um, one thing you can do. Um, sometimes you, uh, you might come across a PDF or you created a PDF and it has pages on it that you don't want or you need to add a page. Um, I'll just show you that when you tell it to show the thumbnails, which I'm going to show, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to turn off thumbnails. So depending on how theoretically I'm turning off, uh, I'm going to hide the sidebar. Okay. So in this case, I had to do hide the sidebar to get rid of the thumbnails. Um, but so when I do this, I just see uh, a continuous two pages. But say I need to get rid of one of those pages. I had to sign a document. It was two pages, but I only need to send them one. Uh, what I would do is I would click up here in file and I would duplicate. So I would create a whole new version of it. Then I would go to file and save and give it um, a name, like say um, um, one page. I'm changing it to Cat videos, ocean view, one page. And I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to go to view and I am going to click on thumbnails. And now thumbnails are back. And so I'm going to click on the second page and I'm going to say, okay, I just want this to be one page. I'm going to hit the delete key and that is gone. And I'm going to click on file and save. But say it was a terrible mistake and I didn't want to get rid of that page. Since I saved the original, I can go over here and I can go view thumbnails. And let's see if I can, I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna pop it over there. And now I'm gonna close this document. Um, so um, once again, this can, Come in handy if you have to deal with PDFs. Uh, we've used it many times here to add pages, to remove. Um, so uh, let me show you how to also annotate a few other ways. I'm going to close this one and I'm going to open up uh, Free Stuff for Free, another class we did last year. And I'm going to go to View and I'm going to hide the sidebar. So now in here, we added some arrows. So there may be some situation where you've created um, a document and you wanna point something out and say, no, this is, I want you to sign here or pay attention to this image. So that's what we did for, for these. Um, as you can see right here, we put um, a basically a rectangular box around uh, the browse button and we put a little arrow in there. And as I hold the uh, cursor over it, it also shows the, um, the, uh, the URL. So we put a live link in it. Um, and we'll be doing these uh, again uh, in our future classes. We'll come up with some new handouts that we can email to you and with live links. So um, would you like me to show you, should I add uh, that? I'm going to go up to tools, annotate. And in this case, I'm going to pick, um, okay, annotate, I'm going to pick a rectangle. And so it automatically came out black because I think that's what we had, I had just changed something to. And I'm going to put it around, um, uh, okay, Burton and Taylor. 
and I'm going to grab it by the sides. Notice how you know um, the, the cursor is a contextual tool. It's kind of smart enough to know what it should be depending on where it is. So in this case, it's turning from a pointer to this little thing where I can grab it and resize it. So I'm going to get right in on their names. And I'm going to, I think this will change it. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make it, uh, I don't know, bright green. I'm going to make it green. Let's see if it changes. Okay. Oh, so that was actually for inside the box. So here's another thing to always uh, remember that there is an undo um, in these programs. So if you make a mistake, don't panic, don't keep hitting things, stop, pause, and then say, ah, hit the undo. And then that part is undone, is done. So I think it's over here. And now I'm gonna try to see if this, yep. So it was over here with, with the box. And when I hit that, I was able to change the color of that box. If I want to do arrows, I can go to tools, annotate, arrow, and it creates one. And you can see how it's now a hand. If it's that, I can grab it and move it around. You can also grab it and make it smaller. You can change the angle like, like that. So that was very handy for these handouts. So we can say, okay, go here and these are, and then follow these arrows. And some people also create signatures using their computer. Um, you can do that in, in preview. You, it can talk you through um, um, signing your, uh, using the mouse or the touchpad, and then it'll save it. And then you can add it to documents, in, um, to digital documents. So I'm gonna click preview. Okay. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna show you one other program going down to the dock. And this is a kind of fun thing that's built in, a uh, photo booth. Um, so now it's a picture of me in photo booth. I'm gonna see if I can move this up. I am going to make myself look ridiculous uh, for your pleasure. Um, I'm gonna click the one over here that is four. So it will take four images one, two, three, four, kind of like a photo booth thing. This is a particular uh, filter. There are tons of filters built into it. View, show effects. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so here's multiple um, uh, effects. And you can, like, this might be fun, particularly with kids, you know, uh, grandkids, uh, whatever. Um, and as you move in and out of the camera, the, the things change. Um, I am going to, um, excuse me, okay, oh yeah, so here's the effects button. So I click on it and yeah, so then, and then there are arrows here. So you can click along and see the wide array of, of effects. So I'm going to uh, pick, a, maybe I'll pick mirror. No, no, it's too much. Yeah. I don't know what I, I, I certainly don't, <laughs> um, but we'll just take this one. It's goofy, and I'm going to click on the camera icon here, and it's going to take a pictures four times. And there's a countdown usually. Um, let me see. Okay, I don't think I hit it. There we go. So three, two, one, and then there'll be another one. Oh, I have to. Okay, so I I wasn't on the four, I guess. So here we go. Well, in any case. That's how it works. Um, earlier when I did it, uh, when I clicked on it and I was on the four one that took four photos in a row. Um, so anyway, so that's the photo booth thing. And then I'll show you where it lives. So I'm gonna click where the images live. If you go to the finder and um, in this case, I have pictures showing here on the left side. Um, the way you can add or remove something from uh, this, this uh, favorite sidebar here is going up to um, up, finder, going up to Finder, going to Preferences, and then all along here you can turn things on and off. So uh, I turned pictures on earlier. Um, if I, I'm going to turn on something else, uh, I'll turn on music, and then that'll be one of the choices that show up here. So now it shows music. So under Pictures, which I already had added to there, there are two libraries. If you open up the Photo Booth library, then we should be able to see the uh, the photos. Show photo. 
yeah, so there, I did show photo and that's the one that we took earlier. Okay, so, okay. So uh, let's get to questions. The first question is, uh, can you show how to like merge multiple photo libraries into like a single library? What is the second question? Like how to organize like a library, like uh, how or why to create more than one library mm -hmm. and how to bring like one library from one computer to another. I may be able to answer that to some degree. Okay, so, so I'm gonna go back to Finder and Pictures. And this is the current uh, photos library. Now you may have, um, um, I'm just gonna be like, you may have photos from another computer that you want to bring over. Um, uh, and once again, I'm not an, an expert on this. I've done it before for myself. I've taken the photos library from one computer, copied it over to a flash drive and then, or, or hard drive rather, cause it was so, so much. And you can drag it in here um, I don't have iCloud set up, so some things may not work, but here, I'm going to go back to um, photos in a second. Here's one um, thing uh, that I meant to show also, the help function in photos. So let's say add um, um, library, okay? Okay, that's very helpful. No results found. <laughs> what I had looked up yesterday was um, they said if you have an iCloud um, uh, iCloud setup. So iCloud, which we didn't talk about, um, basically is the sharing um, um, service with Apple. So if you have iCloud on, you can have um, your images and some of the preferences uploaded to their servers living in the cloud. And it's particularly helpful for like phones, and, uh, and, and tablets, uh, you can have, so if you lose it, um, uh, you can back up from it. And then also you can see photos um, across devices, including um, the Mac, and, um, your actual computer. So what was the second question, Michael, was organizing? Yeah, so how to like organize like your library and how to like create more than one or how to organize the photos and albums? Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, we don't have a lot of images in here um, um, to do it. Some things automatically happen. Like you will have, um, uh, if we had uh, multiple people in here, it, it, it will scan. Um, it automatically has, um, it creates albums for you to be able to search by different criteria already. But you could do something like um, whatever, just new album, right? So I have um, my albums, you click this, an album and it is you know it becomes family you can click and then you know uh you know whatever uh new album and then friends and you can you can drag things in there um you can search uh which is interesting by um i don't know if this is going to work you can not only search by location so i'm going to say i'm going to search san Francisco, we should get that one image. Let me see. So I'm not quite sure why, you know, that isn't working, but theoretically when I type in San Francisco, we, I should be able to find a grouping from that, or they said you can actually search for things like food and it shows up. So, um, but in this case, it's, it's, it's not happening. So I, I, sorry, I can't uh, say more than that. It's interesting, it is finding titles, Frank, Frank's Wild Years. But um, by and large, when you have a larger library, you have also, there's, there's, um, there's albums built in or, um, or th that, that kind of populate. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer for both those things. But you can bring, um, like bring in a, a library over and then bring it into your current library and merge them into it. Once you do that, they're merged together. Um, so you, you wouldn't be able to remove those easily, is my understanding, unless you, um, um, you know, did it by, you know, by hand. So. so Brian, there's another question. Uh, when you were doing edits to your photo before, uh -huh. uh, when, when you do the edits, do they automatically create like a new photo? Is there like original version of it? So it always saves the original. 
And so they always said they call it um, non-destructive. Um, so you can make whatever changes you want and um, you can always do revert to the original. You can also make, if you wanted to, you could also duplicate a photo if you were really worried about that like this. I just right clicked on the burrito and duplicate one photo and then we have another copy of it and you could work from that. But basically here, I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to click edit. I'm going to crop it like that. Um, and I'm going to adjust and I'm gonna go over, let me see, I'm gonna move this over so I can see it. And I'm gonna make it super bright and brilliant and bright. And I'm gonna make it black and white. So I'm gonna click done and go back. So there it is, I've made all these changes to it. If I double click on it and I go to edit, it, and click revert to original, then it goes back to that. And also when you export something, if you, um, you may have seen earlier, um, you have a choice to export the original and then it will be the, the actual file that came in will go back out. So can you make edits to one photo and have the edits in one photo and have the original photo as another photo? So two photos total, but one original and one with the edits. Not that I've, I'm aware other than making a duplicate of it and then working from that. So um, working from another copy of it. I haven't seen, to the best of my knowledge, you know, you're, you, you have that one and you can, like I said, revert or whatever, but there, you don't see different versions of it. Other than, like I said, you can export um, the original and the current JPEG uh, or PDF copy. So is there a feature where you could kind of combine two photos into one, or would that be uh, something more advanced where you have to go to like a different platform to use that platform to combine two photos into one photo? What I know from this is when you do burst photos, which is what um, they, um, they sometimes combine multiple ones into one image when, when you upload it and you have a choice of saving them as burst or combine. That's the only combined one that I, of which I'm aware. So there's like another platform online. It's kind of like a photo editing platform. It's called Pixlr. And there's like an advanced version and like a, like a beginner's version. And you can kind of use that to kind of combine more than one photo into, into one. So you have two photos, you can use the platform to combine it into one. And it's called a Pixlr. So when you create an album, is it possible to like print the album from there or do you have to use something else to print the album? You can, uh, one thing is you can definitely make slideshows of albums. Oh, here's something I should mentioned earlier. Remember when I, when I did the, uh, uh, the smart album? Uh, when you have a smart album, uh, if you delete a photo from there, it actually does delete it from the library. So once again, if you create an album, you can delete an image from it and it won't leave the whole library. But if you're in a smart album and do it, apparently, according to two different things I read, it'll remove it from the library and you would lose that photo. So if you play around with smart albums, uh, be careful about what you delete. Um, now I'm gonna go back to an album. Let me see, so I'm gonna click done. Um, so we're gonna do family. Okay, let's do bogey best, bogey. Um, well, you can create slideshow. So make it a print. So yeah, you can make a, um, unless things have changed, you can um, like almost do like a contact sheet and you can print if that's the, kind of the question. You can go to file and print. I don't have a printer set up on this, but let's see what we get. And I hope this is addressing the question. So we were in an album, it had uh, what, three images. So we can do it. So it's fitting the full um, right here. The US letter is the size that we're going for. Um, fit or fill, um, we can do five by sevens or a contact sheet. And when you're in the contact sheet, you can play around with it a bit, like the size and, and how many columns you have. So that, um, so I, I don't know, but that you can print and we have done that in the past where we, um, we played around with it a bit. Um, when I've had to print multiple things, I've usually brought it into Microsoft Word and laid them out myself. It seemed, I liked having that extra control, but but this is the setting um, for just for printing. Is that answer to the question that you have multiple, when you get to the print dialog box, you have, you have options. And also there was like a suggestion where if you want to print like a large album, you might use like a third party like yeah. company and they can like actually print it for you. 
Yeah, Apple used to do it directly themselves. I don't think they are anymore. There's um, plugins that you wind up doing when you when you do that for uh, um, print and album. So, uh, but yeah, from what I read, that, that you know you can then you know you can export these and send it to whatever Costco or Walgreens, and there's some um, online um, services. There's a few different ones that I think Apple recommends, and then you can I think they have a plugin that goes in with that. So Brian, there was a question about, uh, can you kind of briefly go over what AirDrop is again? Does like everyone have that feature or is it very specific to like newer devices or older devices? Okay, so um, I'm gonna show the, um, the photo book uh, option right now, just to complete that. So under file and create, there's a bunch of different options. So I'm gonna go to uh, book. And then you see it takes us to the app store where they would probably give us options of a few vendors that they um, um, that they trust. That would be a way of directly from there um, printing a book or a calendar or something like that. Um, I think it used to be simpler. I think it was all done through Apple years ago. Um, so AirDrop is in all, um, to my best of my knowledge, all well, relatively recent Mac. So I know I'm using it in a, in, I was using an eight-year-old computer, and it's in there. So I think any any um, Apple Mac device you're using, unless it's super ancient, even then it might be. But it's it's built into um, probably anything you're currently using. Um, and you want me to go through um, sending something again? Is that right? Yes. Okay. I go back over here to library. Okay. So here's all the images we happen to have in here. I am going to log into my uh, to, to this iPad, and this is also, I think, like a, an eight-year-old uh, iPad. Okay, so I'm going to look for some photos. Oh, I think I see a sunset or a sunrise. I see a nice sunrise. Okay, here it is. And I'm going to try and get close to the camera. I don't know if you see it, but there is an icon that's a square with. Um, uh, with an arrow, and that's on all the Apple devices. That's the icon they use for sharing. So I'm going to click on that, and then it pops up, um, and it shows me some options for how I could share it by sending it by mail, by a text message. But AirDrop is the first one in this particular case. So I'm going to click on AirDrop, and then it's going to look for the devices around it, the Apple devices that have AirDrop turned on. You can have it off, you can have it discoverable by everyone or discoverable by contact, people who are in your contacts. Um, when I've been out in the field dealing with this, more often than not, the, the reason it doesn't work is someone has that turned off. And as soon as they turn it on to discoverable by everyone, then you can, then you can communicate. And if you want to, then you can turn it off after you've completed the transfer. So here it says Bridges MacBook Pro, that's what, this one, that's the name of this one, named for the bridge where we work. Clicking on it. And now it is shown up here. And I am going to click accept. And in this case, I'm going to save it to downloads. And my, um, uh, my iPad says it's sent, so I can click done. And I can close it here. And I'm gonna say, that's a pretty little sunset. I'm gonna make it a favorite by hitting the little heart. Okay. So now I am going to go over, I'm gonna close the photos and close this. And I'm gonna to go to Finder, which once again, in the dock on the left side over here, click on Finder, bring it up here. And I'm gonna to go to Downloads and there is the photo. So once again, you can put it directly into the Photos app, or you can have it in the Downloads folder. And if I double click on it, it opens up in um, Preview. So usually when you double click uh, an image, that's where it goes, um, and you have to kind of bring something into Photos to work on it there. And once you're in um, Preview, you can make, once again, some very quick edits here. You can, uh, you can crop and do all sorts of things within this. And you can also change format. So in this case, it's a JPEG. I can go to File and uh, Export, and it gives me some choices. And so in this case, 
I can do PNG. This HEIC is the Apple kind of super high quality compression format. And I'm going to see what happens if I make it a PDF. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to, let's see, as a, so I see it as a PDF. I'm going to click on where I'm going to click on desktop and then click save. And so now this version of it is not a JPEG like this is, it is a PDF. So I'm going to open up this uh, JPEG again, and I'm in the preview app, and I'm going to go to file, and down this long list is export. And there's also a, um, one specifically for export as a PDF, because that you know, happens, that it's a common thing. So I'm going to click on export, and then you have some choices, including renaming it. Um, so, and you, so I'm going to go make sure it gets saved on the desktop. I'm going to say, I don't know, again. And in this case, I'm going to save it as an HEIC. And in this case, it gives me a slider for the quality. And I'm going to have it go all the way uh, to lossless, which means it would be um, uh, less destructive. And I'm going to click on save. And when you have like a list of like photos, is there a way to kind of sort through like your photos, like by name or by like certain order? I don't have like it populated with lots of, um, um, like I, in my other computer, I have lots of different albums and sort of different ways, but okay, we can go by years. All right. Um, and sometimes it's incorrect. This this was not from 2021, but that's when it, I probably made the um, the conversion of it or whatever. Um, months, days, and all photos. Um, you can do, once again, RiceGed right now, since it doesn't have many things, it's not showing at all, but we can do by people, places, definitely by, by, um, by making something a favorite. Um, and once again, you can always create more albums. Um, and if you, uh, and also there's no videos in here, but if there was a video in there, it would also show a category, uh, an album that was videos. In fact, I'll do that right now. I'm going to import, and I'm gonna click on desktop, and I'm gonna click on videos. And here's a video of a local musician, Dave Mahali performing, and I'm gonna go import new video. And so now we have a whole nother category over here, media types and has videos. And if we play it. So, so, um, so I, I, I know it didn't, um, it didn't offer much in terms of organization. Let me see. Uh, one thing I neglected to mention is Google Photos. So um, when you're using Apple Photos and then you're using, say, if you are using iCloud, you get five gigabytes included. And that goes away very, very quickly. Um, like, you know, right, your phones these days are coming 64 gigabyte, 128, 256. So um, you wind up paying Apple, um, you know, a monthly fee, uh, depending on what you're saving up there. So um, Google Photos, is it 15 gigabytes you're giving for free now, Michael? Yes. Yeah, so that's another option for backing up your photos. Um, on my work computer here, I have both uh, going on. So a lot of things are backed up in Google Photos and they have a pretty easy way to share your photos from there. Um, and a lot of folks use Gmail accounts. So in a lot of ways it might be the, um, it's an easy way to share your photos with other people.